Mr. Pitchman comes from a bit further north in Georgia, the Foothills, but was educated in middle Georgia, graduating from the University of Georgia in broadcasting, which meant radio when he uh, graduated. Uh, hearing his broadcasting voiceovers was the genesis of this project several years ago, as I wondered how someone ended up with a dialect that seemed caught in the act of trying to change. It raises a host of questions I hope to keep exploring about how much changing can be done, what hinders it, and why. Lippy Green, 1997, reports uh, research suggesting that, quote, the more alike two languages are, the more difficult it is for language learners to target the new sounds. So, it is, a, so is it a neuro-linguistic effect, or is it an issue of salience and monitoring following Hickey in 2000? Or could it be a semi-conscious function of audience design, a la Bell, in 1997, who asks, isn't it also possible for speakers to attend to their speech and rather consciously sound more non-standard? Talking to broadcasters. Besides some commercials Mr. Pitchman made, you will hear parts of an interview with him, one that reveals just the kind of battle between status, or the requirements of being in the broadcast business, and solidarity, traditional Southern values, that Preston discussed yesterday. So you don't have to really prepare to come to these. You just listen to everyone else's paper and then put it together. Uh, adapting concepts from Meyerhoff, 2001, we could characterize Mr. Pitchman, I love this term she uses, as possessing highly laminated motivations that run in different directions. So let me put this tape on. And uh, basically, if we look at the handout, again, you will see I have transcribed what you're going to hear from Mr. Politician. I have put the uh, in bold, the place where is a place for constricted and non-constricted post-vocalic R. In italics, we're talking about syllabic or nuclear er, where there's an opportunity there to do er or uh for these Georgia speakers. Underline are opportunities for I as I, and again, in both contexts of before a voiceless uh, obstruent or not. So then you can see in each case I've given a figure that shows what the person did with these targeted terms, and a few notes underneath, but I will not have time to discuss them if I, uh, in the time I need to play the tape. Notice, though, so first we have Mr. Politician on the smallpox scenario, then Mr. Pastor in the week after the uh, terrorist attack on the World Trade Centers, then we go uh, to some lighter material from Mr. Pitchman, who does general advertising from a radio station in the center of the South, Columbus. And uh, also uh, a second sample, which I may need to cut short. Uh, at, and, but you do have the specifics of what's happening in these various samples with these two the subdivided features. Finally, parts 3C through 3H are excerpts from Mr. Pitchman, and I put a little note for each one, and I'm sorry about the spacing, going from one printer to another is always a problem. Uh, notice in 3C, his self-observational dialect, note that he code switches, I like, uh, shifts that is, I like that term from Ramon, and does four performances uh, through it, and also notice his ambiguity, well, his, his ambiguous feeling about the solidarity versus status. In number two, you'll hear him, or D, baffled. Why do you want to know about me? Three, note he uses I in timing, but I in sometimes. Very easy. Four, F, that is, focus. Lebov is around. This will tell you and others why people say I in the South. And uh, G, uh, which one of the advertisements is most southern sounding? And he does another performance with the code shifting into another voice type, and then final remarks. So I will just start this and let it run until uh, it's out or until Captain gives me the hook. It was a very uh, tough scenario. It was a smallpox scenario. We gathered out at Andrews Air Force Base and we spent about 18 hours there, but we simulated about three weeks of activity. So. Uh, it was as realistic as it could have been, given the given the circumstances and the compressed time. The smallpox scenario started in three states. Uh, we did not know where the cases had originated, but uh, they rapidly spread. And then we did trace it back to attacks by a terrorist group at uh, shopping centers. But uh, the big thing about it, the the uh, tools in which uh, which we had to deal with it. Uh, were very limited. You really have to use uh, 
a major uh, number of doses of vaccine to put fire breaks around it. And if you don't know about it, then the incubation period is about 10 days to two weeks, so you don't know how far it's spread and you don't know uh, the target population to uh, vaccinate and you didn't have enough vaccine. So that was the, hmm. the, the horror of it. Uh, it was uh, very realistic. But I must add that it was probably the least likely form of attack uh, that uh, terrorists would use because bioterrorists bio uh, are not likely now to have access to smallpox. You can't discount it. It's not uh, impossible, but uh, they're very limited uh, uh, supplies, and we hope that they're under secure control. You can see the southern eye and eye variation. Perfect. That is not any one of us that has not been affected by the terrible atrocity that was committed against our nation early in the week. Like you, over and over, I watched the unthinkable horror of it all. Tears welled up in my eyes as I kept watching that plane hit that building, seeing those victims being brought out, listening to those families, watching those rescue workers, hearing about the great unity, the rally of oneness brought about in our nation. Another emotion kept creeping in this week, and that's the emotion of anger. How could anybody in the world do such a thing as this? There is no cause big enough. There is no cause big enough for people simply to forsake the sacred worth of human life. Now we move on to Mr. Pitchman. Do you know what's the most exciting and dynamic form of advertising where 57% of the population is exposed to it one hour prior to their largest purchase of the day? This medium also has a reach six times greater than print, and 39% more people spend their time using this medium than our local paper. What medium continues to strengthen and grow year after year? The answer is radio. To prove this, we here at McClure Broadcasting would like to say, Thanks for listening, because radio gets results. And you can see that with his postal cattle cars, 100%, but with the nuclear curve, he goes to a point. Anybody's on, Bobby, everybody listen up. It's your buddy, Bobby, with advice about taking your car and body to anybody's on about it. If you got a major bash or just an itty bitty bump on your body, nobody can fix it better than Columbus body works at it. Somebody might tell you different, but nobody can. If you take your car's battery body to just anybody's auto bike, somebody may treat you badly. At Columbus Body, your auto body probably gets the need of repairs done professionally. At Columbus Body, nobody's going to treat your auto body badly. Now, who wins if you take your used body to anybody's auto body? Nobody. Well, somebody, but not you. And probably not your auto body. And you can bet it'll cost you a bit of booty if you take your car body to just anybody's auto body. Not that Columbus body automatically costs you less, but you get what you pay for. Don't go with anybody's auto body. Go with anything you can trust. Take your auto of bat and bump of bat body to Columbus body. Worth saying. 1919 Veterans Parkway. 